Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all uh, to the next lecture on inorganic chemistry of life, principles and perspectives. Let us first initially have a like uh, uh, a little recapitulation of what I uh, have done in the past several lectures. During the past several lectures I tried to uh, give you basics of the elements uh, of their importance in the biological systems. First of all metalloprotein I have tried to give you a field a metal ion surrounded by the protein, a metal ion bound by the protein side chains etcetera and the protein surrounding. The next so it is basically a kind of a coordination complex of metal ion by a protein as a ligand uh, and then followed by that. So, you can also uh, define metal enzyme. So, metal enzyme will be the metal ion, the protein surrounding and the function. So, therefore, you have a function for that and then I also have given what does these elements do in biological systems, which of these in the uh, periodic table are important or essential for the biological process, why are they essential to the biological process, how these elements have been absorbed, all of these we have looked at. What concentrations? What will happen if the concentration uh, is imbalanced in the body? When we uh, look at some of these concentrations can be greater, can be lower. Uh, then what you what will happen where it is lower, what will happen where it is uh, higher. Uh, so, uh, the kind of a syndromes that are expected out of these concentrations we have all looked at. So, that means a particular concentration it should be balanced uh, and the balance should be maintained. Uh, so, the lower will be a problem, the higher will be a problem. So, those kinds of things I have already uh, highlighted and how are these ions bound when you say that they are in the, in the protein how they are bound. So, they are directly bound to the side chains or they are bound to the some special units like porphyrins etcetera. So, various kinds of things are possible. So, having completed that then I went into explaining you the basic very basic things of proteins, nucleic acids, mutagenesis all those kinds of things, protein structures, protein synthesis, nucleic acid structures uh, and uh, mutagenesis, site targeted mutagenesis all these their utility in the context of uh, inorganic chemistry of life. So, then followed by that I also try to explain certain basic aspects of coordination chemistry because this is a biological inorganic chemistry where the inorganic chemistry of life. So, inorganic chemistry of life is inorganic chemistry in the presence of the biological systems. So, therefore, uh, if one need to look at how these inorganic ions bind, interact, coordinate with the biological systems. So, in that context the coordination chemistry comes into picture therefore, I have tried to give some very basic things like what, are, what is a complex, how the complex is formed, what is the stability, complexation, stability, chelate effect, geometries, their polarizability, hot soft acid base concepts, spectrochemical series all of these I have explained and all of these have a direct relevance in this particular course. If uh, somebody require a little additional uh, you know support uh, uh, the books that I have given you can please go through that little bit refresh your 12th standard or first year BSc coordination chemistry is good enough if you are if you are knowing that much is good enough, but you need to know uh, much. After that I have talked about the techniques used in the biological inorganic chemistry. Uh, various techniques like mass spectrometry, absorption spectroscopy, emission spectroscopy, CD spectroscopy, EPO spectroscopy, uh, mass Boyer spectroscopy, many uh, of electronic type, nuclear type uh, all these kinds of things that we looked. We also looked at some lifetime measurements, we also looked at uh, the microscopy uh, techniques. So, variety of techniques which are used in the biological inorganic chemistry or inorganic chemistry uh, which is playing a role in life uh, where one needs to map the molecules or look at the processes that are happening by spectroscopy, what kind of a species are generated, different oxidation states of the species, their uh, electronic properties, 
their magnetic properties. So, all of these I have already talked at a very basic level which is just sufficient for this particular course. Now, having completed let us now start with the with the next topic basically on the enzymes where the metal ions play a role. Before that let us look at a few common aspects. So, enzymes obviously we are talking about the enzymes containing requiring the metal ions. In other words the enzymes which we are going to talk in this particular course are those where the activity is coming from the uh, metal ion. So, unless the metal ion is present that a particular enzyme is not active that is the first and foremost that you should keep in your mind to the, throughout the course entire course of this one. Okay. So, therefore, the, uh, the metal ions are required not only for the enzyme activity, enzyme activity is also known as catalysis. So, because enzymes act like a catalyst I will come back to the catalysis part after a couple of slides. Uh, just hold on that part of it. In the meanwhile, let us see they are required in these enzymes not only for catalysis, but also for stru some structural roles as well as for the regulatory roles. We will understand this as we keep going through this slide and next slide much more better. Okay. So, that means these metal ions interact with the proteins and give their function or induced function functional aspects. So, what are the ways uh, by which these metal ions can interact with the proteins? One of them is referred as the kind of an interaction which is like a covalent or tightly bound. So, covalent and tightly bound to the proteins such kind of things are referred as metalloenzymes like transition metals like iron, like copper, the cobalt, nickel all these kinds of things manganese, zinc all of these kinds of ions which are transition metal ions can directly bind to the metal low enzymes very much similar like that of a covalent situation. So, therefore, they form covalent complexes with the protein and result in the form of the metal low enzymes. There is another class where the metal ions are not so strongly bound, but interact, interact somewhat weakly probably by the ion with the dipole ion with some, some ion. So, mostly ion dipole is the ones which are important. So, these are all weaker interactions. So, we are talking about the weak interactions which will play important role and these are generally seen with the alkali alkali earth ions like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium these are the ones which are important in the biological systems. So, generally we can classify the interaction of the metal ions leading to metalloproteins, metalloenzymes as metalloenzymes where the metal ions are bound by covalent, metal ion activated enzymes where the metal ions are not covalently bound, but weakly interacting with the system and thereby activating the protein to form an enzymatic activity of this. Let us look at uh, as I said that there are different kinds of roles played by the metal ions in protein. Metal ions can be played a catalytic role which is called functional. Sometimes some of the metal ions not necessarily show any function, not necessarily show any catalysis, but can show some kind of a structural integrity, structural rigidity, structural integrity. So, therefore, this kind of structural rigidity and integrity is also possible by some ions. Some ions can be showing a catalysis or a function, some of them may be regulating the, pro or the functions of the protein too. So, we have the metal ions as a structural, metal ions as a functional, metal ions as a regulatory. Similarly, even in the protein we know that I have already showed you the protein primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure and quaternary structure in the past. So, if you look at the, the, the proteins may have some subunits and some of the subunits may have a structural component, some of the subunits may have a functional component, some of the subunits may have a regulatory component all three are not required in all proteins, all enzymes. Some enzymes may not have any structural necessity, uh, functional is enough. Some proteins may have both functional and structural, some proteins may have functional and regulatory and some proteins may have structural, regulatory and functional all three. So, you can have uh, either functional alone or structural alone or structure and function together or structure 
and function and regulatory together. So, all these kinds of combinations are possible in the metalloproteins and the metalloenzymes. Look at one example here. This is called zinc figure. I will come to the characteristics of this when I come to the zinc story because I am going to have a separate chapter on zinc, how the zinc ions play a role in the biological systems. But till then what is important to me here is on this right side you can see there is a helical component. On the left side you can see a ribbon like. So, this is a beta sheet and this is an alpha helix and these two are tied together through an ion zinc through certain amino acid residues side chains cysteine, cysteine and uh, histidine and then uh, histidine. So, these kind of things. So, you have uh, so the, what is this called? This is a structural rigidity. So, it brings the two components of the structure one is the beta sheet other is the alpha helical. These two structures are held together by the zinc ion. So, therefore, in this particular case zinc is referred as a structural element in this. Similarly, you can see an example here there is a alpha helical component which is shown in the yellow color. There is a, uh, another alpha helical which is shown as the, uh, the uh, bluish kind of color and there is some other region which is open kind of a region and uh, that is shown with this kind of a cyan color and there is some beta sheet also. And in this region you have a zinc. So, zinc ion is holding this region so that the alpha helix alpha of this and this alpha helix are more or less perpendicular like this thumb rule of this. So, what is the role of this one? The role of this one is a structural role. So, structurally it is holding this part of the protein with this part of the protein together uh, with respect to the metal center. So, we could see very well the structural component of this and let us look at the uh, role of the metal ions even beyond the uh, uh, structural you can look at even the regulatory. For example, calcium 2 plus plays a regulatory role in muscle contraction. Okay. So, binding of calcium to troponin is one of the protein which initiates a sequence of uh, events and all these sequence of events will result in the muscle contraction. So, after several slides I will be explaining the muscle contraction. But right now let us take it as granted that the calcium plays a regulatory role in the muscle contraction. How it uh, plays a regulatory role we are going to see in later stage. I have given another enzyme here which I will talk to you when I come to the iron story. It is called methane monooxygenase. Methane monooxygenase is a protein or an enzyme which converts the methane to methanol. So, this enzyme converts the methane to methanol and containing iron, but there are the three possible kind of a units are there. There is one unit where is the hydrolase property is shown this particular unit, there is that one alpha and there is a, a, a unit which is called reductase where the electron transfer takes place all of this and then finally, your reaction takes place over there. But you require a coupling of all these things together and this coupling of all these together is done by this protein which is called the regulatory protein and that is called gamma here, gamma here, gamma here. This will regulate the alpha and beta, when should alpha should function, when should beta should function. The beta is the one which functions through the electron transfer, alpha is the one where the reactivity occurs and finally, the met methane goes to methanol and out of the two oxygens one oxygen is added to methane to make a methanol second oxygen goes as water. These details are explained not now when we come to the individual metal ion stories of all this for example, iron case. Now, you understand from the previous one structure here regulatory let us look at something of the activity or functional. So, as I said the metal ions also play a functional role uh, obviously that is the most important one that is the most primary uh, thing of these metal enzymes. Metal ions act active uh, enzyme active site reason for the activity of the enzyme. Let us look at one particular example here the details of functioning will be given later stage right now you can see one example of the enzyme. This enzyme is called superoxide dismutase. 
superoxide dismutase. It has two metal ion centers, one is the copper, other is the zinc. There are two ions here you can see, there is a two ions are here to see because this is a dimeric protein. So, in each monomer there is a uh, bimetallic center, the copper center, zinc center, both the copper center and zinc center. So, the copper is shown in the blue form, zinc is shown in the uh, non blue form. So, these are the ones. So, that means this enzyme can react from this part of the subunit as well as this part of the subunit. What will it do? It converts the O2 minus dot, which is called superoxide radical, into the form of at the end to H2O2. So, O2 to O2 minus dot is a very reactive because radical. It can react with the tissue, it can spoil the tissue and therefore, the uh, body has a mechanism of uh, diverting this particular species, basically dismuting this kind of a species to less harmful species which is H2O2. H2O2 is also harmful, but much less level of harmness as compared to the O2 dot minus. So, that is superoxide uh, radical, superoxide radical. Now, let me come to the stay, uh, explanation of the two metal enzymes, two metals ions containing in this uh, present in the enzyme, one is copper, one is zinc. Actually, the zinc is also present in the zinc 2 plus form and this zinc 2 plus is required for holding the structure of this unit rigid in a particular conformation. So, the conformation is frozen by the presence of zinc 2 plus. If I remove the zinc 2 plus, conformation is collapsed and the copper 2 plus is actually the center where the reactivity occurs. Suppose I remove the zinc 2 plus and allow only copper to be there function will not be seen because structural rigidity is important or alternatively I remove the copper 2 plus allow the zinc 2 plus to be there and look for the activity that will not be there because the functional unit is not there. Therefore, copper 2 plus is a functional zinc 2 plus is a structural and in the first step it will uh, it will convert into O2 and second mole of addition of the O2 dot will make it the H2O2. This mechanism will be explained to you later on. Uh, in several cases, in case of iron, in case of manganese, in case of copper zinc, I will be explaining later. So, you will understand this much more better later stage not now. Right now, I wanted you to understand there is a copper 2 plus center which is a catalytic role, zinc 2 plus center which has a structural role. That is all the information that you require from this particular uh, slide at this stage, but later stage I will give more details on this too. Okay? Now, we are talking about the enzyme, enzyme you know is a biological catalyst. So, any biological catalyst, what, what, what will a catalyst do? It will enhance the reaction rates, it will uh, work at a much normal conditions, not necessarily any abnormal conditions like the chemical reactions that you require, reactions that are required in industry, not like that. It is a much more milder, much more easier, much more safer kind of a conditions. And it will also give greater specificity towards the reaction centers uh, or towards the substrates, etc. It will also have a capacity to control the reaction. So, specificity and control all of these are shown. So, to have an idea of what an enzyme, you see if you take this as an enzyme and you consider this as an active site. So, therefore, obviously at the active site you expect the substrate to interact. So, substrate come to this and interact with this and this is like a substrate, this is an enzyme, this kind of a uh, lock, this kind of a key and lock and key kind of a mechanism. So, that is not necessarily true because later stage, this was a very preliminary model, later stage models have talked about the flexibility in the protein, the flexibility in the, uh, in the substrate as well and also people have talked about the induced fit all those kinds of things. So, it is not a, a uh, necessary step to know at this stage. All that we need to know is the enzymes are biological catalysts. In our case, the enzymes are metalloenzymes. So, the reactivity is happening at the metal ion center and it, uh, the enzymes can do a higher rate of reaction. They can work at low, at uh, simpler conditions, easier conditions, normal conditions, at uh, not any harsh conditions at all they can show greater specificity, they can show greater selectivity, they can show greater control of all this. 
So, therefore, we are going to work with such kind of a units in the entire course. So, you should understand when I say an enzyme. Okay, having looked at uh, uh, different kinds of the metal ions, they are the metal ions which form uh, the roles of the uh, the covalent kind of a bonding. And they, they are there are kind of a metal ions which do not form the covalent bonding, but they interact with the metal ions with through some uh, through proteins through some weak interactions and activate the protein to convert it to enzyme. So, what kind of reactions are we talking about? What kind of functions are we talking about? Something like the, the oxygen transport we know very well, metal ion transport we know very well, their storages. We can also very important thing is hydrolysis of many condensed bonds. They, we know that there are a lot of peptides in the body, a lot of proteins in the body. The proteins have to be uh, broken to make into the uh, individual amino acids because they are required for the synthesis of the protein. So, therefore, it is peptidase kind of thing. Uh, we need for all of these we need some electron transfer, we need also proton transfer and there are some cases both electron and proton will occur together the, in the protein together as a coupled kind of a system. So, you, you also not require, uh, sufficient enough to have hydrolysis peptidase, you also need the oxidation reactions. To get the oxygen attached to the substrate, you need oxygen to be activated, O2 to be activated. And this can bring oxidation, this can bring hydroxylations and it is only not oxidation, you can also have reduction. Reduction can come into the from hydrogenases, A reduction can be like removal of uh, oxygen can be reduction. Uh, addition of a hydrogen is also a reduction, all of these kind of things, hydrogenases, removal of oxygen. So, therefore, these are called oxidoreductases and atom and group transfers across the uh, different substrate to the, pro, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, product, substrate to the product kind of a group transfers, all of these atom transfer, group transfer and metabolism, metabolism of carbon, metabolism of nitrogen, metabolism of oxygen, metabolism of sulfur. So, many kinds of metabolisms. So, in almost all these kind of uh, functions, the metal ions are involved, metal enzymes are involved in all of these uh, things. Let us look at a little bit more closer uh, or specificity of this. So, let us look at the classification. So, the, all these functions can be classified into oxidoreductase, that means they are involved in oxidation, they are also involved in reduction transferases, they are involved in transferring from one to the other. They are uh, hydrolysis, they are involved in the hydrolysis. Peptidases, they are involved in the peptide bond hydrolysis, peptide bond breaking. Lyases, they are involved in removal of some groups, uh, uh, the atoms without the hydrolysis, atoms or groups without the hydrolysis too. Isomerases, you know the isomerization, it can be an atom, it can be a group from one to the other. Uh, their molecular formula will be the same, their structure will be different, so and therefore their function is also going to be different. Ligases, you can join and form a bond too. So, in general, the metalloenzymes can be classified as oxidoreductases, as transferases, as hydrolases, as peptidases, as lyases, as isomerases, as ligases. Okay? So, there are some examples are given. Many of these examples are we are going to deal with as we keep going to the each individual metal ion story in that. So, right now I am not going to read all of these. I just told you oxidation process, reduction process, transferring a group, hydrolyzing a uh, condensed bond or peptide bond hydrolysis or removal of some groups uh, or isomerizing the things uh, or adding uh, things together to form a bond uh, etcetera. So, all of these are important classes of uh, enzyme functions. Let us look at how these are uh, uh, monitored or, or maneuvered by the metal ions. So, you see that the sodium potassium, their interaction with the proteins is very weak. They are involved in osmotic balancing, osmotic pressure balancing. They also are involved in charge neutralization. They can bring gradient in the charge control because of the gradient, the potential is very. Therefore, they will control certain mechanism, structure stabilizations and enzyme activations. So, some of these kind of a, uh, activities are shown by the weakly interacting ions such as alkali ions, sodium and potassium ions. Let us look at the next set of ions, magnesium and calcium. 
magnesium and calcium their interaction with the proteins a bit more stronger than the sodium and potassium that is why we written as a weak medium kind of a interaction. So, we talked about very weak the medium kind of an interaction. So, with this kind of an interaction the magnesium and calcium able to activate the enzymes ok because you know that magnesium uh, is a Lewis acid calcium is also a Lewis acid 2 plus we are talking about all of these they can stabilize the structure calcium can even trigger the functions calcium can act as a secondary messenger I will explain after some time uh, in some lecture secondary messenger muscle activation as I told you skeletal mass. So, all of these different kinds of functions are generally done by the, the sodium potassium alkali ions, magnesium calcium alkaline earth ions and we have a bunch of uh, transition metal ions. And the transition metal ions as you can see let us take zinc and nickel they can bind very strongly. I told you a few slides prior the transition metal ions bind to the protein like a covalent bonds. So, those coordination complexes are basically covalent complexes. So, therefore, their interaction with the, uh, with the proteins instead of saying the ligand I would say protein is strong. Of course, they are Lewis acid and they can also go through redox nickel but not the zinc. What about the other transition ions like iron, uh, copper, manganese many things are they can bind even stronger than this. So, we use the word very strong they, they can do the Lewis acid catalysis they can also do redox catalysis ok and very iron and copper is involved in oxygen transport I will explain you once I come to the uh, story of iron where I take one subsection as the oxygen transport category. So, what I told in the previous to this is that we have uh, sodium potassium very weak interaction and magnesium calcium somewhat better interaction zinc and uh, nickel strong and other transition metal ions are very strong. So, all of these are involved in activating the um, proteins to form enzymes to convert into enzymes to behave like enzymes. Let us look at bit more closely what are the kinds of functions these transition metal ions can play while sitting in enzymes. So, very general there is no specific because specific things will come later stage. Let us take a vanadium, vanadium is involved in nitrogen fixation you know the nitrogen is not directly utilized therefore, nitrogen should be converted and this kind of a conversion is called nitrogen fixation into ammonia. So, we will be explaining not in the vanadium I will explain you when it comes to the malmodium story, but vanadium also is found where in some microorganisms uh, where the molybdenum is not available vanadium enzymes do the same function as that of the molybdenum enzymes. Vanadium is also involved in oxygenation oxidative kind of a reaction halogenation and it can also uh, inhibit the ATPase activity I will be explaining all of these. Manganese is involved in photosynthesis you know in photosynthetic reaction photosystem 2 there is oxygen evolution this oxygen evolution comes from the manganese I will explain all of those oxidase property superoxide dismutase I explained a while ago and dehydrogenase is again means removing hydrogen which means basically oxidation. Look at the iron iron can be involved in oxygenase property both mono di iron is involved in oxygen transport iron is involved in reductases iron is involved in electron transfer of course nitrogen fixation and superoxide dismutase there are many many different kind of a functions are possible by iron because iron is present both as the uh, the heme type of enzymes non heme type more details will come up a bit later when I come to the story of iron. Cobalt, cobalt is very limited and it is found only in one case that is as a vitamin B12 is a coenzyme only that case, but that coenzyme coupled with a large number of enzymes and function to give oxidase property group transfer. The majority of the uh, functions in the case of cobalt are group transfer co, uh, reactions which you will come to know when we come to the story of the cobalt. Nickel is involved in uh, hydrogenase means hydrogenation kind of thing, hydrolase means uh, hydrolysis kind of thing and dehydrogenase which means removing the hydrogen means oxidation. So, nickel is involved in hydrolysis part 
oxidative power, reductive power, all of these are there. That means different nickel enzymes will show different kinds of properties, not properties, functions. Let us say to be precise, functions. Okay. Copper. So, copper is involved in oxidation, copper is involved in electron transfer, copper is involved in oxygenation means oxidizing the substrate, copper is involved in superoxide dissipation, copper is also involved in oxygen transport. Variety of reactions functions are exhibited by copper containing enzymes. We are talking about the, the enzyme functions containing these metal ions, the enzyme functions containing these. Come to the story of the zinc. Zinc is involved in hydrolase property, okay. zinc is involved also in structural property. That means, that particular zinc which is in the form of the structural will not show any function, but it can show only the structural rigidity. There are some zincs where the uh, catalysis, the, in the catalysis there can be hydrolase, it can be peptidase also, it can be oxidoreductase, it can be transferase, it can be lipase, it can be ligase. Uh, a few slides prior to that, I have explained to you all these classes of this. Hydrolase is the one which is involved in hydrolysis, oxidoreductase is the one which is involved in the oxidizing the substrate, reducing the substrate and the other category is transferase, either the atom or the group is transferred from one to the other and we have also explained uh, lipases uh, and then we also explained the ligases too. Okay? The, uh, removal of a groups without the hydrolysis, making a new bonds with the ligases, all of these have been explained already, uh, just mentioned already to you earlier. It's talking about now, molybdenum can be involved in a nitrogen fixation. I will be explaining this very clearly when we come to the story of the molybdenum, then its oxidoreductase property and its oxotransfer properties. So, molybdenum containing enzymes are involved in nitrogen fixation, they are involved in oxidation reduction of the substrate, uh, it can reduce the substrate, it can oxidize the substrate. They can transfer the oxygen from the protein to the substrate, from the substrate to the protein, reversible and we can show all of these when we come to the story of the molybdenum. The tungsten is not found in the normal systems, this is found only in high temperature lavas. In the high temperature lavas there are, there are some micro bugs which, which are uh, stable and at that temperature like 300-400 degrees Celsius, the tungsten is present and this is involved in the hydrogenase. So, overall what I try to uh, tell you in this particular part of the uh, class is that we, there are general functions of the metal ion, metal ion containing enzymes, metal ions can bound to the proteins uh, in a covalent fashion and activate uh, to get various functions. Metal ions can also be interacting uh, with weakly and they are metal activated enzymes. So, metal enzymes and metal activated enzymes all both I have brought to your notice. Also I have brought to your notice the metal ions can act as a structural type role, functional role as well as regulatory role and I have explained to you there are combination of these roles. Not only from the metal ion point of view, even from the protein point of view, you have uh, a uh, structural part of the subunit, functional part of the subunit and as well as the, uh, the uh, regulatory part of the subunit, I have explained all this. Then I have come to the general class of uh, functions, the functions like uh, hydrolysis, oxidoreductases, transferases, isomerases, lyases, ligases, all these kinds of things are involved in this. Uh, enzymes and then I explained to you the interaction of sodium potassium is very uh, weak. So, and, uh, and when you go to the calcium and magnesium they are a bit more stronger and they can even activate the enzyme, they can even trigger the functions which I am going to come very soon. Then when you come to the transition metals they bind very strong to very strong, they can do hydrolysis, they can do redox, they can do oxidative reductive kind of things and uh, all kinds of functions are possible. And, all, and when you take the viridium, when you take the manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, each of these metal ion, I will be taking the corresponding enzymes and explaining you later. So, therefore, uh, therefore I have given you very brief and how these metal ions activate the proteins and convert the proteins into metal enzymes, metal activated enzymes and, and simple classification of the enzyme activities. 
So, these things will go in the next 10 plus hours or so uh, explaining based using each one of the metal ion, each one of these metal ions which are involved. Uh, thank you very much.